Hello and welcome to the Expert Insight on Sourcing Bombs video series. This is part one. If you are an electronics designer of any sort and you are doing some component sourcing, chances are you can do it a lot more efficiently. This series is gonna teach you how to do precisely that. Let's jump in and get started. This series is going to be covering Octoparts bomb tool. And the reason we are doing this is if you've ever felt like every time you deal with a bomb, you are untangling a massive complicated knot, we are gonna show you how to untangle that really, really quickly. And to do that, I'm joined by my good friend of All Team Academy fame, Zach Peterson. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. So to get us started, Zach, is this something I can uh, just jump right into? Do I need to install anything? Can you show us how to actually get started with it? Yeah, I can show you how to access it. It's extremely easy. First, you just navigate to octopart.com and you'll see here in the upper right corner, there's an option for the bomb tool. And you wanna make sure that you're registered and signed in. And once you are signed in, you can click on bomb tool right here and you will navigate to this page. From here, you can try a sample bill of materials. You can upload a file if you have one on your local computer or you can create a new bill of materials from scratch. You can also access this tool or add parts to a bomb uh, by looking at the Octopart search results and there are options from the search results to add a part into the bomb as you can see right here. Great, so is this something that uh, I need to register to start using? Are there benefits to registering? How does all that work? Yeah, you do need to, to register to start using. There are a couple of settings that get saved in your profile when you are using the bomb tool. So one of those, for example, is preferred distributors. And of course, many people that work at many different companies have their, their favorite distributors, for example. Or if you work for a larger company, a lot of times there is an approved distributor list that the distributors have already been qualified. Or for example, maybe the distributor offers your company credit. And so it's very easy to order large quantities from them. And so for those reasons, a lot of times your, your employer may have approved vendor lists that you can then implement in the bomb tool as you're using it. Gotcha, gotcha. So, okay, so what if I'm, I'm going, I wanna start this thing, let's say I've got, uh, I've got old bombs, I've got uh, some that are from vendors, like you're talking about, I've got these old copies. Do I need to do some sort of standardization process to start using the tool or can I just jump right in? You can just jump right in. So I'll give you a couple examples here of uh, some bombs that I have. So let's take a look here. Um, we'll go into the bomb tool and I'll just upload a file. And uh, you go ahead and pick. Do you, do you want the old project or do you want the Texas Instruments reference design? You get I kind of want the old one. I want yeah. the old one because I want to see how forgiving it is. Okay, <laughs> so let's, let's, let's take a look. Yeah, so it goes through, it reads each line item, and then you can see here it's already matched the part numbers to the description, and then it's pulled up some offers uh, from various distributors. This is what the bomb looks like once it comes into uh, the bomb tool. Um, so, you gotcha. can, so you can see here, right, all of these different part numbers, right, there are exact matches, there are similar matches, and you can go through and uh, basically you know, if there are, if there's more than one option in here under this suggestion, you can select it. You can also access the parts search results page directly from the bomb tool. So you don't have to like do a bunch of copy and pasting and stuff to go get component information. You can just jump right to those parts and review them if you need to. Gotcha. So I, I would assume in the, in the file that you uploaded, we have some, we have some outdated uh, parts, some some incomplete part numbers, that sort of thing. What what happened when we uploaded? To, yeah, uh, those... so when there's a few things that happen, right? Um, so you see here, right, we have this part number from Samsung, but one of the things here is that we don't have anything from preferred distributors. So in that case, we might wanna consider an alternate part, especially if, like I said, for example, we're working at a large company, 
we have approved vendor lists that we have to buy from and these two distributors are not on our approved vendor list so that's one of the things that happens now of course this isn't the only uh, part that might not be available from a preferred distributor and you can see here up in this top overview we actually have a little bit of a summary of what's going on in this bomb so you don't have to scroll through line by line um, you can see here that we have five parts that are not found we have eight that are an exact match uh, in the BOM, and then here we have similar parts, so something that was uh, matched similar to what was in uh, the bill of materials. Um, so just from clicking on these, it automatically filters down uh, through the uh, items in the BOM and shows you just those items. Um, same thing here with uh, the offers uh, list here. So this offers list is basically like what matched to your preferred distributors. So for example here I can click this one for Mauser and you can see here that it filters down to just the Mauser parts. Now you might be wondering why exactly isn't this part offered from your preferred distributors. Well, you see here there are these green and red lines on uh, these entries in the bomb, and you can see here that if I just hold my mouse over this red line, you can see what the manufacturer life cycle is. This part has been discontinued. So we definitely need to replace this part with something new uh, if we can't get some approval to buy it from an aftermarket distributor. Gotcha, gotcha. So I mean, this is this is really handy. It, it took what twenty seconds to get this thing uploaded. I mean, the the first question that occurs to me looking at this is, if there's any sort of you know something incorrect or some accuracy that's not quite there, uh, that's going to have a big impact down the road, right? A ripple effect once you get into manufacturing. So. How easy is it to find any of that, you know, something that's misidentified, for example, and just swap it out? Yeah, yeah. So um, the, the swapping out part is really simple. As you can see here, there's there's several that are that are not found. And so when the lines are blank like this, I think we would want to go back into the original BOM and just take a look and inspect at what's going on. But let's take a look at the example for this uh, Samsung part number. So let's say I want to replace this with something new. What I can do is I can just copy this description. I can go right back over here and I can paste the description right here. And sometimes I need to just refine the search just a little bit to get down to just the right uh, set of results. And you can see here it pops up with some suggestions that match this description that I placed right here. So I can just immediately click this and replace this with this Teo Yudin part number. And there we go, it's already been replaced. And you can see here it fills in the offer from Mauser, it updates the price, you can see some of the stuff up here just updated. Um, so that's pretty simple, right? I can just take an existing uh, description, copy it right there into this part numbers column, and then immediately make the update. I don't have to go back up to the search and then start looking for a part number and then copy and paste it in. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that's a really good place to jump into the next uh, installment in this series because we're really looking at, you know, we're talking about supply chain information. Uh, when we're looking for these alternatives, we're just trying to see if these alternatives are viable, if they are safe to use, if they're similar to the parts we already have, if they're verified, all that stuff. So in the next video in the series, we're going to drill down deeper into finding these alternatives. And Zach is going to show us exactly what we need to look at. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Come back and check out the next installment. Thanks so much.